Hi everyone, Mikey 79 here and welcome to this new Dick Tech video of Magic Duels. As you guys can see, we're revisiting my Dimir artifact deck uh, that I updated it. So I built this deck in the Kaladesh season, I already liked it then um, and, and right now I'm pretty fond of it as well with all the new additions of Aether Revolt. So let's uh, check out what I've brewed up with. So I've given a lot of uh, attention to this uh, deck build. Um, yeah, I, I tweaked it a lot, uh, got things out, got it back in uh, all the way, vice versa. So it's been a struggle uh, to make it work a bit uh, to my uh, pleasing. And this is what I winded up with, so let's check it out. So first of all, we play three copies of the Renegade map. It's just a great mana fixer for uh, one colorless mana. We get an artifact, which of course has lots of synergy in this deck. He enters the battlefield tapped, and when we sacrifice it, we get to search our library, excuse me, for a basic land card, reveal it, and put it into our hand. So like I said, pretty decent fixer. Then we move on to Battle at the Bridge, also from Aether Revolt. For one black and a an colorless X value, we get a sor sorcery speed removal spell that says target creature gets minus X minus X until end of turn and you gain X life. So you can uh, get rid of pretty big creatures with this. Uh, you can also use Improvise, that means if you tap an artifact, it pays for, for one colorless. So yeah, you can bring down pretty big creatures and you can even bring down an Ulamog with it if you have the mana. Pretty decent. Then this one was a bit of a struggle, the crane here, I already played him uh, in the previous build. Uh, one colorless and a blue, we get a 1-3 flying. And when he enters the battlefield, look at the top four cards of your library. You may reveal an artifact card from among them and put them into your hand. Put the rest on the bottom of your library in any order. So the struggle was I played three copies of this guy. Should I play this or Trophy Mage? Trophy Mage says it's a 2-2, uh, no flying, just a 2-2. And when he enters the battlefield, you get to search your library for an artifact with mana cost 3, exactly mana cost 3, and put it into your hand. Now, that's also a pretty neat ability, but it's a bit more limited. With this you go four deep in your library and you can pull out any artifact. Of course you gotta be a bit lucky with, uh, with what you get. Uh, sometimes you don't pull an artifact at all, with, uh, especially with my luck. But <laughs> anyway, uh, I thought this one is more versatile and Therefore, I play the crane over the trophy mage. He also comes into play a turn earlier because trophy mage is three mana. Yeah, and all I, I play tested the trophy mage. Certainly not a bad card. It's a very good card, but for now in this deck, I prefer the crane. Another two drop is his contraband kingpin. He was in before as well. He never went out. Always kept this guy in. He's just great. Uh, one four bodies. A damn good uh, early blocker for a blue and a, and a black. He has lifelink, uh, okay, with a 1-4 body you're not gonna gain life that much, but it is welcome. And whenever an artifact enters the battlefield under your control, scry one, and that's just an awesome ability in this deck. Then this is a card that went out, but eventually it went back in. Um, I first wanted to play, uh, let me show you guys. Uh, what I wanted to play, so it revolts. I need uh, artifacts. I first wanted to play the implement of not of combustion, but of the black one there. Yeah, of malice. Uh, it was this one or the alchemist's file. The reason why I chose for this one is because when this one enters the battlefield, you draw your card immediately. This one says you have to sacrifice it and pay one mana to discard a card, your opponent to let your opponent discard a card, 
okay and when this comes into the graveyard you draw a card so basically if you want it for the card draw uh, in first instance uh, if that's your main goal then you're better off with a vow because that happens immediately with this one it's the turn after or maybe in the same turn but you pay a mana more okay uh, your opponent has to discard a card so it's a difference of two cards but that's not the reason why I played it I play it because I want the card more and not per se to let my opponent discard a card also it holds back a pretty picky creature so I can stall the game better and that's why I played the file then the grasp of darkness I skimmed one copy first and played another battle at the bridge so I, that I had two copies but that didn't quite work out because there are still too many vehicles around and you need some instant speed removal for those and that's grasp of darkness then the Scrap Traveler is a new card for 3 generic mana. We get a 3-2 body and whenever he or another artifact you control is put into a graveyard from the battlefield, return to your hand target artifact card in your graveyard with lesser converted mana cost. So when this one dies you can get a Vile back or the Renegade map. And when he's on the battlefield and uh, a big creature or a big artifact of you dies, uh, then yeah you can get some cool stuff back so yeah pretty nice card then the foundry inspector this one was a pretty late addition actually but it works pretty well uh, for three generic mana we get a 3-2 body which is great and artifact spells you cast cost one less to cast so getting things cheaper and earlier on the board is always a good addition and yeah I must say it's pretty damn good uh, also we're we are a control deck but we we also want to beat our opponent a bit uh, from time to time don't stay back all the time if we can we want to attack and yeah it's a good uh, attacker as well so yeah pretty good card then I still play two copies of the filigree familiar I cut down the copy but yeah I still love this guy three mana uh, a 2-2 two -two, when he enters the battlefield you gain 2 life and when he dies you draw a card awesome I guess I dropped one copy to play one implement of examination basically uh, the blue implement lets you draw 3 cards if you sack it for one blue mana which is uh, nice but you don't want to play too many copies of this then a 4 drop treasure keeper for 4 generic mana we get a 3-3 three -three which doesn't sound too exciting but whenever he dies we get to reveal cards from the top of our library until you reveal a null land card with converted mana cost 3 or less and then you may cast that spell for free all the revealed cards go to the bottom of your library so yeah pretty awesome this is a card that gives you even when he dies he gives you card advantage and that's what we're going for um, Filigree Familiar gives you card advantage if he dies. Scrap Traveler gives it. The Vile is card advantage. The Crane is card advantage. You, I mean, you get the picture. I try to play a lot of things that give card advantage. Then a card that's really bonkers is this Make a Nice Production. For 4 mana, 2 blue and 2 generic, you get to enchant an artifact that we control. can be any artifact. And at the beginning of our upkeep we get a copy of that one and we have, when we have 8 of those we win the game. Now I never had 8 of them uh, for some reason and even you don't have to even put it on the gear hole to be OP. I mean uh, obviously when you put it on this no noxious gear hole it's uh, pretty awesome but even I actually like putting it on this vial. A vial, no one sees it as a threat, but if you put that make a nice production on it, you get an extra card every turn. And a Nula Mark, you can uh, keep him home until tomorrow. I mean, <laughs> you you keep uh, the, the the strong creatures back, or you can choose that they can block or something. So yeah, that's pretty awesome. And almost on every every uh, artifact that you put it on it goes really nuts if you if you put it on this implement you can draw cards like there's no tomorrow and yeah pretty pretty damn good then another four, four drop still one copy 
Topter Spy Network, yeah. The reason is obvious. We make Topters and we draw cards. Great card. Then the new Planeswalker, Tesseret the Schemer. For 4 mana to generic, a blue and a black, we get a 5 loyalty counter. Planeswalker, which is okay, it's not the best Planeswalker around, I'll admit. But in this type of decks, it's pretty good. So plus 1, we get a colorless artifact that gives us any mana if we sack it. Minus 2 uh, target creatures gets plus X or minus X until end of turn where X is the number of artifacts you control so usually you will be using this as a as a removal uh, instead of a buff um, and then the minus 7 you get an emblem and at the beginning of that combat you get an artifact creature you control you, you give it power and toughness 5-5 five five. so in this deck absolutely no problem to choose an artifact then a Sky Sovereign console flagship, I first played this one, Universal Solvent, do not play this card, it sucks, <laughs> it really sucks. I mean, I'm sure there are people who can get some value out of it, but it goes too freaking slow, it's so slow, I mean, I can't even start telling how slow it is. Okay, you pay a 1, but before you're on 7 to get rid of a planeswalker, man, Jesus Christ, it takes too long. Um, you're you're already already dead by that time. Um, Sky Sovereign doesn't necessarily kill that planeswalker immediately, but at least he keeps them in check. And you can attack with it uh, and do it again and again and again. So yeah, this is a, a great vehicle, a great card and it shouldn't be a problem to crew it. Then Tamiyo's Journal, yeah, I still like this one as well, I play only one copy because it is legendary. Uh, we get to investigate at the beginning of our upkeep and when we sacrifice three clues we can use a tutor, we can search for whatever we want. Then I play one copy of the Barrel's Expertise and it's starting to look like a commander deck with uh, all the singletons, but hey. Uh, it is what it is. Uh, 5 mana to blue. Uh, return up to 3 target artifacts and or creatures to their owner's hand. And you may cast a card with converted mana cost 4 or less from your hand without its paying its cost. Yeah, pretty nice as well. You can uh, get the board a bit clear before you attack with your fatal blow. Or you can uh, take something back in your hand for its enter the battlefield effect or to protect it or whatever the hell you want to do with it. Uh, yeah, pretty nice card. But I found that uh, two copies of this are a bit too much. Then the uh, Noxious Gearhawk, that's a card where you want to play more than one copy of, but yeah, too bad, it is a mythic. Uh, for four mana, two black, uh, we get a 5-4 menace creature, and when he enters the battlefield we get to destroy another target creature, and we gain life equal to its toughness. Awesome card. Then two copies of the Marionette Master still, uh, especially in addition with the, with the journal bunkers, this card can be uh, 6 mana, we basically are going to get a 4-6 and whenever an artifact we control is put into our graveyard from the battlefield, target opponent loses life equal to its power. Now, I can't tell you how many games this guy has won for me, but it has been, it has been a lot. Then a new card, the Planar Bridge, um, yeah, I first dropped it the Tamiyo's journal for this one uh, but they work all here they work so differently and uh, yeah the, the journal brings you value earlier in the game than the planar bridge but yeah the planar bridge says for six mana you get a legendary artifact and when you tap it for eight you get to search your library for a permanent card and put it onto the battlefield and then shuffle your li library so pretty awesome as well and then still one copy of the Metalwork Colossus, of course. Uh, 11 mana, but we're not gonna pay that because we pay X less for each non-creature artifacts converted mana cost that we control. And if we sacrifice two artifacts, we can return this one into our hand from the graveyard. So yeah, a 10-10, I hope it's obvious that that's a big fatty. Then for the mana base, I play seven islands, seven swamp, two sunken hollow, uh, two drowned catacomb, one inventor sphere because it's a legendary land, 
and for submerged boneyards. Uh, I took out the evolving ones because I noticed that my mana was sometimes, uh, yeah, sometimes I was screwed. Uh, not enough mana to do all the shenanigans that I wanted to do. So yeah, I skipped the evolving wilds and I thinned the deck out already with the renegade map. So yeah, can't thin the deck out too much either. So especially not early in the game. Then if we check out the mana curve, it's a bit weird. Uh, we start with the four one traps as a renegade map and the battle at the bridge. Uh, 12 two traps and then we go down eight, five, three, and then we go slightly up again at the end because uh, are all those fatties that we play. So that's the deck guys, uh, I hope you uh, enjoyed this uh, deck deck video, hope to see you at the gameplay video, see you guys there, bye bye guys, have a nice day.